And dude, that's what makes this Indian so great. It's got tons of power. It's got this cool like neo retro look, right? And it handles a little funky, but you know, what are you gonna do about that? It's such a sweet ride, man. How, I think how it's much really power is it making? 123 horsepower. And like how much torque? 84 foot pounds. Hold on one second, hold on. What do you got? That sounds Awfully familiar to me. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not sure why, but it, it seems a little familiar. Um, I see. I and, see. And isn't this five thousand dollars cheaper? I see. You want to compare an XSR nine hundred mm -hmm. to an FTR twelve hundred? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The number's bigger over here, Spice. Yeah, but that's classic American style. I mean, even I know that, and I'm the cruiser apologist. Big engine, big noise. This thing's really got it where it counts, right? I this mean, this thing makes more torques. Yeah, but it makes this More is so this sweet, is a hundred pounds torgos. lighter. Since when do you care about lightness? All the <laughs> torques here, man. That I, man for like nine grand versus fifteen. I mean, this is like ninety percent, right? They had to shove all those eagles inside the engines, right? <laughs> that's where the that's where the cost came from, obviously. Now look, let's talk about the specs. Let's try to figure this out. This one's gonna be a weird comparison, but stick around with us. Look, man, I'm just saying, someone like you, you love the torque. Why wouldn't you want more torque out of this engine over that one, right? Like, what's, what's but since, the... But since when are you dogging on the MT-09? Man, I thought this was your little I baby right here. I used to right own here. one. I'm beyond that now. I'm sliding around on the FTR over here, man. I mean, I do got to give you, it's a pretty looking bike, but I mean, does it really have anything for this old beast right I, here? I think we got to talk about the specs because people are going to add us on the comments saying that we can't compare these two bikes. But if you know what bike to compare this thing against to, please let let us know because we can't figure out what bike to compare this to and we don't want to do the typical American thing of being like, it's exquisite. No one can be compared against this thing. You can't possibly pit a bike against the FTR because we got to pit something against it, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it is a motorcycle and honestly, I think that these two are basically right in each other's wheelhouse. They're pretty common, except for I still, price. I, I really. still think That's that this thing. is probably the better choice right here. Well, give us the specs. Tell us why. Well, right here you've got the lovable 847cc, no, it's 849, god It is 847, isn't it? I think it's 849. No, it's 847. It is 847. 847. They, they rounded up that to 900 by a lot. <laughs> That is a lot of rounding up right yeah. there. <laughs> Gotta make sure everything's every, everything's right, otherwise you guys will eviscerate me in the comments <laughs> section. It, yeah, they will. So this XSR right here is packing the lovable 847cc inline triple that Yamaha has been putting in this bike for the better part of a decade now. Almost, yeah. Yeah, and it's been everybody's favorite little just goon machine. It's making 113 horsepower and 65 foot-pounds of torque. Crucially for this comparison, it weighs 430 pounds wet and ready to ride and costs you 9,499 bucks, but you can get these dirt cheap in the secondhand market. You can get MT09s for like nothing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can find on Craigslist MT09s for like 5,500 bucks, which is so much bike for the money. Um, it's hard to say that that's not a great value proposition. It's why Yamaha sold so many of them. They yeah. do really, really well. And I gotta believe you're gonna have a little bit of work to do to make up for that $15,000 price tag. Yeah, so the Indian FTR over here, which by the way, guys, this is one of our giveaway motorcycles. Make sure you hit the links down below and find out how you can enter to win this beautiful motorcycle. It's way prettier than this thing over here. Sorry, oh. Whitney behind the camera. <laughs> She's just shaking her head saying, no, it's fine. Um, so to make up that price chasm, we have way more electronics over here. We've got a six axis IMU, traction control, LCD touchscreen, Brembo brakes, all kinds of amazing, much more premium features on this motorcycle, fully adjustable SAC suspension. And I know it's not a very high bar to clear, but I do think this bike handles better than the XSR 900. Yeah, this thing does have fully adjustable suspension, but it's more of a suggestion than anything. I mean, you can yeah. kind of adjust it a little. It's like, you know, do you want it to be bad or worse? So. Do you want it to be a stiff pogo stick or a bouncy <laughs> pogo stick? Up to you. But the Indian FTR over here is also powered by this lovable 1203cc liquid-cooled 60-degree V-twin, making 123 horsepower and 84 foot-pounds of torque. Now, those power figures are pretty impressive, but this bike is hampered a little bit by its weight. It weighs about 520 pounds wet and ready to ride, and unfortunately by its tires too. This thing has a 1918 setup and a 150 outback on these kind of flat tracker style tires. So this thing just does not have a lot in the way of pure mechanical grip 
from the actual rubber that's meeting the road. But again, you forgive it because it is just so beautiful and it makes a lovely sound and we are just simps for those types of things in motorcycling. It's just such a sweet bike. Ducatista intensifies this over here. This is a secret Ducati. Convince me otherwise. <laughs> Man, I, I still, I think this is the bike for me right here. It's just a lot of fun, really torquey, cheap. It is bulletproof. It is, cheap. It is bulletproof, yeah. Um, as we know, so many squids have tested that bulletproof <laughs> mentality with yep. the XSR 900. But I think we gotta get both of these bikes out on the road and test them back to back, see how they feel, and see how two kind of wonky handling, fun, torquey bikes feel on the side of the tire. So let's go do that. Alrighty. Folks, here we are out on location about to ride these two machines. Both poor handling funky motorcycles for different <laughs> reasons, but both quite a bit of fun. So Mr. Spider over here rode in on the XSR 900. This is Whitney's bike, as you guys know, and I rode in on the FTR 1200, our giveaway bike. And so now we're actually going to swap it. I'm going to start on the XSR. You're going to start on the FTR, which you actually not ridden yet before. Nope. So this will be a great barometer for you to see, like, okay, you just came off standard sport naked onto Extremely long wheelbase, 19 inch flat tracky thing. So uh, let's do it, dude. <laughs> Nothing to it but to do it, right? Yeah, no kidding. I am very excited to ride this thing. Yeah, it's uh, definitely your kind of motorcycle, that's for sure. Nah. That is just angry, isn't it? Uh, I like that. Yeah. I think off the jump, the first thing I'm noticing is just uh, fit and finish, right? Oh, yeah, totally. The... Uh, for sure. Like, I, I mean, the Indian's a, a world apart from the FTR. Yeah, Excuse just, me, the FTR is a world apart from the XSR. Yeah, the, the, the whole situation up here is just so much cleaner, more well put together. The clusters, you know, it's got the Indian uh, eye stamped on it. Um, yeah. It's just prettier. It's a, it's a nicer place to sit. Man, I can feel that rear tire slipping already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so as I mentioned to you, uh, I think it was before we started the vlog, one of the few bikes that I like to keep traction control on for people because it is genuinely hairy on the side of the tire. Uh, it is intermediate plus, as I would say. Yeah, I think that really is mostly just down to how much freaking torque this thing makes. 84 foot-pounds of torque as compared to the XSR's 60-something, I think, right? Yeah, I think it's right at 69, if I'm not mistaken, which uh, is the right torque number for that bike. You can, you definitely do feel the weight on this bike more because it's about a hundred pounds heavier. Um, you know, you, you think, well, you know, 84 foot pounds of torque, that's a whole lot. Yeah, sure it is. But you know, it's still a lot heavier than the MT-09 in, or the XSR is. Yeah, the uh, XSR 900 and the MT-09 platform bikes are notoriously very light. I think this thing is like 414 pounds or something like that. Yeah, it, it is very, very lightweight. Uh, yeah. And, you know, in typical American style, you know, they couldn't break that 500 pound barrier. I, I believe this one is 423 pounds wet and ready to ride, if I remember the spec section correctly. Oh, it's, a, it's definitely 523, not 423. Oh, did I say 400? Yeah, 523, I meant. Now, for me, the thing I'm noticing, having spent a little bit of time with the FTR doing our first ride with it and riding it up here, uh, being on proper sport rubber on this XSR just feels so completely different than the FTR. Um, I just feel like I have so much grip on the side. Uh, I have much more of a V-shape to these tires. It also helps that Whitney has brand new tires on this thing, so it does feel nice and sticky. But uh, do you notice that on the FTR, where it's kind of like you, you kind of get that sport bike feeling out of it, but it's a, it's a bit weird, right? Yeah, the, uh, I don't quite know how to put it, but it feels like there's, you can feel the different chunks on the tire. Yeah. Um, and it, it doesn't transition very smoothly. Um, and it's, it's very, these tires are very round. Um, they're, they're super, they don't have a very big pronounced V shape to it. So from side to side, it's very lazy. Um, and I think, you know, that is also down to its wheelbase and tire size, uh, but also the shape, you know. Really Turn in and the initial flick in on the FTR is very sluggish compared to a, a normal sport naked bike like the SXR 900 here. But that exhaust note, don't lie, do it. Oh man, I, I, I like just listening to big grumbly V-twins. And honestly, having spent a lot of time with our giveaway Indian Scout, this thing's loud. 
sure, like, it, as a normal human being without ear protection and a tight sport helmet on, this would be obnoxious, but as a rider, I am really not bothered by it all that much, honestly. Yeah, I think I'm only bothered by it knowing how much auditory damage I'm inflicting on others while I ride it. Yeah, I love how the, you know, it's more bored out than the Scout is, so it has a different sound to it. It's definitely a playful, interesting motorcycle, but I think it's it's so weird because when I ride it in a vacuum, I'm like, oh yeah, like this is definitely like a fun, sporty, kind of, you know, standard bike experience. But then you get on something like the XSR 900 and it's so much more traditional sport naked that the FTR feels bizarre. So I'm curious to hear more of your feedback on it. Yeah, to me, this honestly feels like uh, it, it's got a lot of in common with like the Rebel, but with a super high seat height, you know? Yeah. It really feels to me like it's handling more like a cruiser where it doesn't really want to hold the line super duper well. Um, it wants to stand up and go straight. Uh, you know, it doesn't it doesn't feel super happy on the side of the tire. Yeah, you got to fight that bike a whole lot more to get it to do what you want it to do, you know? Yeah, it's it's a uh, very active riding style. You you really need to think about what you're doing on this bike. Now the, here's the question: Can you imagine chucking that into a corner and uh, sliding it around at 60 miles per hour like those guys do? <laughs> man alive, that is. Uh, you have to have some serious cojones to do that, man. I will say, that's one of the bikes I've seen you ride more aggressively through City Park around here. And uh, I think it says a lot about the character of that bike that you do want to, you do want to wring its neck a little bit. You do want to play with it a little bit, you know? Yeah, I, I really enjoy this thing. It's, <laughs> it's very fun. Should we do a little bit of a quick fire drill here, swap bikes and... Yeah, let's see how Check you feel out. on the XSR now. Yeah, it's a, it's a sweet bike and it just, yeah, jumping aboard this thing, dude, the cockpit is so much more premium, it's insane. <laughs> yeah, it, it really, the whole package on that motorcycle is just so much nicer. And it makes sense, it costs like friggin' $5,000 more, right? Like, now I gotta say, it's not a big achievement, but the throttle response on the Indian is so much better than the XSR. <laughs> Yeah, the, I, this thing is herky-jerky. Yeah, it's that classic MT-09 throttle is just not super well sorted. And uh, the Indian's FTR throttle here, it, it's, you know, it's, it's supple, it's nice, it's predictable, which I like, you know? Yeah, I was, I was expecting a little bit more, um, I guess a little bit more thrash and, you know, just jerkiness out of 84 foot-pounds of torque, you know? but it's actually really usable. It doesn't feel overwhelming at all. Yeah, no, it's it's a really, quite a mellow 84 foot-pounds. Um, and it's funny, because I think about this bike and I think about the kind of guys who would ride it. You know, it's, it's guys who have probably had Harleys and big Indian touring bikes and perhaps want a dalliance with a little sport naked type of thing. And to them, this thing's gonna feel like a rocket ship. You know, it's gonna feel so powerful and peppy and agile and light. But to us who are used to more normal sport nakeds, I can't help but feel the heft on this thing. You know, I really feel the mass of this motorcycle. Yeah, that bike is uh, a big boy. It, it really is shocking how much the weight difference changes the way these two bikes feel. Um, you know, again, this bike is so much lighter. Uh, it, it, it flicks in so much more normally, despite the fact that it's still an MT-09 and holds a line about as good as you can expect it to. I think it's cool that Yamaha, for whatever reason, made that kind of neo-retro MT-09 in the form of the XSR 900, because for a lot of people, I think that's why the XSRs do so well, is they have such a cool aesthetic to them, especially the 700s with those seats and then the, the round headlight up at the front. You know, I mean, you would be you, you could you know forgive someone for looking at these two bikes and thinking that they're pretty similar because they do look kind of similar yeah they they have a lot of that you know old school flair you know uh, it takes an actual motorcyclist to understand what that flat tracker look actually means man just on the side of the tire as for what it's worth i feel more confident on that motorcycle than i do on this one 
It's the on-off throttle on the MC-09, man. It's just like, ugh, it doesn't inspire confidence on corner exit. <laughs> yeah, you just, you, you feel like you grab a big fistful and it whacks your head back. <laughs> it also doesn't help that Whitney has this spicy sprocket set up on here. No, that does not help at all. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the FCR here, I don't know, it's, it's, it's so hard because I feel like for years now that this bike has been out, people have been trying to figure out what it compares to and what it's supposed to be compared to. And I think it's all about your reference point. I think it's about where you're coming from with motorcycling, and that's how you're going to figure out where to compare it to. Because you yeah. ask 10 different people what they compare this bike to, you're going to get 10 different answers, you know? Mm -hmm. And and having ridden a whole bunch of different bikes, and then that one, I'm still not entirely convinced of the validity of XSR versus FTR, you know? Yeah. Like, these are these are very different bikes that are trying to do very different things. I think that's one of the things with the FTR is that there is no other sort of flat track inspired sport naked out there. Nope. Like Harley could maybe make one because I think they compete in the AMA flat track stuff. Um, I guess Royal Enfield could make one, but that would be a whole different ball game out of their Interceptor 650. That would not have the poke that this one has. So it's yeah. like nobody really makes a bike like this, you know? No, it, it's, it truly is kind of a one-of-a-kind thing. And I think that's one of the things that disappoints me the most about the 17-inch uh, FTR is it lost a little bit of that je ne sais quoi that that thing has. Although, yeah. I haven't ridden it yet, so who knows? Maybe I'm talking out my ass. But it was... <laughs> it's very interesting going back and forth between, you know a big American V-twin that's trying to be sporty and a proper, you know, sporty silly bike. Like literally first gear on this thing is just like... <laughs> but uh, that's the kind of stuff that the uh, Indian FTR conjures up, you know, it conjures up the kind of old school badass flat tracker style racing, you know, backyard hooliganism type of thing. And this is like a new school approach on it, right? Yeah. This is your new school kind of uh, goof around motorcycle. And it's crazy looking at them back to back because you can just see how long that FTR is, you know? This yeah. thing looks absolutely stumpy in comparison, you know? Yeah, the uh, you can really tell just that they're trying to do different things just by looking at it, you know? Yeah. This thing is very obviously just silly wheelie mode. And this is like, no, we want to keep the front wheel down but the engine's too powerful, so. Yeah, they're like, so by keeping the front wheel down, that rear gonna slide, and it's gonna <laughs> slide a lot and everywhere, and hold on for dear life. <laughs> yeah, I've never ridden a bike that has 120 horsepower that has frightened me as much as the FTR. Uh, it's a bit of a scary bike. I love how we're already scalloping the rear tire. It is what it is on this bike, you know? <laughs> so, oh, what do you man. say we get back to the shop and, uh, hey, don't look at those, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I totally wasn't doing burnouts on the bike, you know? <laughs> Let's get back to the shop, wrap up our thoughts on these two bad boys. Let's do it. All right, guys, we're back in the shop now with these two motorcycles. We have ridden them back to back, kind of helping to elucidate our understanding of these motorcycles. And despite this was your first time on the FTR, you have a good foundation for sport naked motorcycles. Mm -hmm. What did you make of this bike? <laughs> it was, I see where they're trying to go with the sport naked aspect of it, but it's like not quite Right, yeah. but, but in a good way, you know, don't get me wrong. I really love this motorcycle and I love the way it handles and how it feels a little funky, um, but it's not a sport naked bike per se. I think a lot of that comes down to the tires on this motorcycle. Uh, the big front tire makes it turn in a little bit slow. Like I said on the vlog, I think the uh, shape of the tires is also doing some damage to this. The rear tire is very you know, flat, not not just because mm, we've been doing a little bit of squidding on it, uh, but it is it is very, um, it just, it, the, the curve is very basic on that tire. Yeah. Uh, I would say they're serviceable. I think that putting the 17s on here would solve that problem, but I also think that you would lose a lot of the soul and character of this motorcycle. 
This bike reminds me a lot of, of a dish of food that has like a kind of like a funky kind of flavor to it. And mm -hmm. you're like, that's weird, but I kind of like it, you know? Like yeah. some dish you're trying at some new age restaurant that you're like, this has what in it? And you, you, you take a bite and at first you're like, man, that's weird. But then you're like, I kind of want some more of it, you know? Mm -hmm. It has a lot of that flavor and feel to me. And I agree with you. I think, you know, we have yet to try the ones with 17s on it, but I think a lot of the charm and the coolness of this bike to me is this funky tire combination. It is the fact that it doesn't handle like a sport naked bike. And it's got so much character and pizzazz to it. That's what we were saying, right? Like so much zest to this thing. Yeah, and this is a, a spicy bike too, but it's also just kind of basic. It's a little more traditional. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, it's, it's a known quantity. It's one of those bikes that everybody goes to and they're like, yes, the MT-09 platform is fun and silly and stupid mm -hmm. and it handles like ass but we like it in, in spite of itself correct uh i think that it's just it's too it doesn't have a je ne sais quoi about it like this thing does yeah but i guess that's why it's fifteen thousand dollars right i suppose this guy takes one ride in an indian ftr he's already using words like je ne sais quoi the ducatistas coming out of him you love to see it guys you really love to see it um, yeah, I think the, uh, the XSR 900, it's for the guy or girl who wants the aesthetic or the appeal of a Neo Retro bike, but just wants no compromise, still, it's 100% just sport bike, normal yep. motorcycle underneath it. Um, and that's why these have been so successful, in my opinion, is that they have the aesthetic and the character of an old school motorcycle, but none of the drawbacks, basically. Whereas this has the aesthetic of an old school bike and some of the drawbacks. This is still... A bit strange it's not a normal sport naked bike but i agree with spy i love riding this thing around because of that um and it's tough to say at the end of this video saying like oh which one would you rather have because they are so radically different in terms of price you could get that plus like a used ninja 400 for the price of this thing yeah. um, which makes me wonder like do you think this thing is worth 15 grand for riding experience Whew, it's tough man it really is because i could see myself owning this and be very happy with it me too honestly you yeah. know at, at at 15 grand, I'd need to be like, well, I gotta make the case to myself a little bit more. But, you know, maybe you pick one up a little bit used, maybe it's like 12, then it feels a little yeah. bit more comfortable to me. But even still, that is a lot of money for a single motorcycle versus this, where you get a lot of the same stuff with just a little less of the character and brawly nature, but you still have a ton of fun on this bike. That's true. I think um, ultimately depends on how deep your pocket puts, books are uh, for which bike you want to get. Uh, but for you know my money, I think I'd still get an Indian FTR over an XSR 900 because number one, you just don't see many of these on the road. Yeah. You see MT09s and XSRs, you shake a stick here in Austin, you're gonna hit an MT09, right? Like yep. They're literally everywhere. But uh, these, because the price is a little bit higher, you just don't see these that much. And they just, I don't know, for me, anytime I see one on the road, I'm like, oh cool, it's an FTR. And I think they have a little bit of that special quality about them. And uh, yeah, I could see myself owning this motorcycle, which is high praise for it, I think. Many of our giveaway bikes, I could not see myself owning. But this bike, I generally could. It's very interesting and fun to ride. Um, but it goes to show you that wonky handling motorcycles come in all flavors and sizes and shapes, especially this portly motorcycle over here. <laughs> Closing remarks, Spite, anything else you want to add for the folks at home? Motorcycles are fun! Motorcycles go out and really ride them! Fun. You really should just ride them, but you can't go <laughs> wrong with both these bikes. But uh, that's going to wrap up today's video. Guys, remember this FTR over here is a giveaway motorcycle. Hit the links down below, find out how you can get entered to win this bad boy. And we'll catch you next time. See you later.